Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl and I am here today with a little cat scrappiness project. I'm going to be making a clear mini slimline card. I hope you'll stick around, see what I mean by that and see how I'm going to make it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you know much about me, you know I love shaker cards, I love vellum, and I love to make clear cards. Well, I have an idea since cat scrappiness carries so many fun slim and mini slimline products that I would try a mini slimline clear card. Now, there is one little issue. Normally when I make clear cards, I have the entire card base be from clear card stock, but because you would need a piece of acetate that was almost 12 inches long, I'm going to adjust it just a little bit and make a clear front mini slimline card. In front of me here are the main supplies that I'll be using. As I add any more products or tools, I will let you know during the voiceover. But don't forget, as always, if I leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my dies today, I'm going to be using the Thanks Sentiment with Shadow die and the Reverse Scallop with Hello Mini Slimline die set. For my pattern papers, I chose two pieces from the Ugly Sweater Slimline Paper Pad. I chose this fun one in the back because I love the little penguins and the little Santa Claus face. And to go with that, kind of almost as a solid, I chose the green and white polka dots. I also have a piece of acetate here. This is a slimline acetate sheet. It is three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. To make this card work, I couldn't use the mini slimline because I need just a little bit extra at the top for kind of like a fold over or a hinge. To add some embellishments to my card, I got out the Christmas Funfetti Sprinkles Mix. I thought there were these cute little um, snowmen and little Santa Claus faces in there. I thought maybe I could add a few of those to the front. And today, I'm going to be trying out the Cat Scrappiness Bone Folder for the very first time. It has a pointed end and then more of a flat end, and can I just tell you, this thing is smooth as butter. It just slides right through my hands and I cannot wait to see how this feels when I use it on the clear cardstock to make that crease nice and crisp. I will have all of these products and the Cat Scrappiness online store linked below so you can go check it out. And while you're there, don't forget to browse around because they have not only their own products, but products from many other companies. Let's get crafty! To get the final size of my mini slimline today, I decided to measure the largest reverse scallop die, and it was three and a quarter inches wide by five and three quarters inches tall, which is perfect because that slimline clear acetate is three and a quarter inches wide as well. Now I'm going to be doing all the cutting and the first piece I cut down is the green polka dotted piece to just slightly under five and three quarters inches tall by three and a quarter inches wide. Now you'll see later why I cut that just slightly smaller. I wanted to cut down my second piece of pattern paper so it was the same size as the middle reverse scallop frame. So I measured that quickly with my ruler and made those cuts. To make the back of my card a little bit more stable, I did cut down a scrap of white cardstock to three and a quarter by five and three quarters. You'll see here that the green polka dot paper will go on the front of it, and once again, there's just a slight bit of white at the top. 
One thing that I like to do when I make clear cards is figure out some way to hide the personal message inside. Now for this one, I decided to make an inner card. So I cut a piece that was the same width as my more colorful pattern paper and just slightly taller than twice the height. Now, just because I didn't know the exact measurement to cut that to, I did cut it a little longer and then later I'll just trim off that excess white at the bottom. Finally, for the cutting, I'm going to take that piece of slimline acetate and cut it so it was about six and a quarter inches tall and then leave it at the three and a quarter inches wide. This way, when I go off camera and score it, I will have a little flap at the top that is a half an inch to add adhesive to later. Now you'll see here that I got out that new bone folder to make a nice crisp crease and let me tell you it slid so nicely across that clear cardstock and it creased it so well it was almost flat after that. Now I need to get some adhesive added to that top flap so I can hear it to the card backer and just so I can more easily see where that area is and not get adhesive onto the front of my clear piece, I did bring in that scrap of cardstock. It's actually the inner card and I added my adhesive to that half an inch at the top. Then I brought back in that bone folder and just made sure to burnish that adhesive so it was stuck down nicely. Next, I added adhesive to the back of the polka dot paper and I did make sure to put a little extra at the top where it would cover up the clear cardstock. And now this is why I cut it a tad bit smaller. I'm going to align it at the bottom of the white cardstock and there is going to be just a little gap at the top and this is going to allow the cover to lay nice and flat instead of the fold being impeded by that pattern paper. I then finished getting the inner card ready, which just meant placing the pattern paper on the front, trimming off that little bit of excess white on the end, and then adhering this centered on the inside of the card. You'll see that the pattern can still be seen when the card is closed, but the message on the inside will be covered up. Once that was all put together, I moved on to my die cutting. I will be cutting that middle frame from the green polka dots. I got out a scrap of vellum for my thanks shadow, and then I got out a scrap of red card for the thanks itself. I like doing these shadows in the vellum so that it separates the sentiment from the background, but that you can still see through it just a little bit to that pattern. The next portion of creating this card was a lot of gluing and waiting for it to dry. I started out by putting some dots of glue on the back of the red cardstock thanks and centered that as best as I could on the vellum shadow. Then I added some lines of glue to the back of my green frame and I placed that on the card front and I tried to line it up as best as I could so it almost looked like it was on the inside just right around that pattern paper. I let both of those pieces dry for about five minutes before I brought back in my art glitter glue and added adhesive to the back of the sentiment. Once again, I tried to put the glue in about the same spots. That way it would be covered by the vellum if any kind of oozed out. I decided to put this almost centered top to bottom. Once again, that dried for about five minutes. And here's a look at my almost finished card. The vellum does hang off the edge just a little bit. So I trimmed that down before I brought in the Christmas Funfetti Sprinkle Mix to add some embellishments to the front. Now originally my plan was to use like the penguins and maybe the Santa head from the mix, but because I already had all of those cute little images in the background, I decided to go with the little white snowflakes. I put five on the front. I try to get it in open spaces on the pattern. And then I brought back in my glue bottle once again, added dots of glue and adhered those snowflakes to it. Now while I work on that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to ask to get to know more about you and tell you a little bit more about myself. Today I would love to know 
Besides A2 or standard size cards for me, what is your favorite size card to make? Is it slimline, mini slimline, 5x7, square, other? Let me know in that comment section below and make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered my question and would like me to see it. I can't wait to see what some of your favorites are. For myself, my cards probably 95 plus percent of the time are just standard A2, but lately I have really enjoyed making these mini slim lines. I just like the area you have and just the kind of different shape. Now after I had all my snowflakes in place, once again let that dry for about 5 minutes and then here are some close up looks at the finished card. I love that you can get the different layers without adding a lot of bulk. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's mini slimline clear front thank you card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.